Life is about constant evolution. Always better today than we were yesterday. Welcome to another Easy Day Was Yesterday. I'm your host, Scott Williams, and today we are out in the field. You can probably hear uh, behind me the, uh, the motor of one of our razors as it travels across the sand here on the famed obstacle course at Bud's. And with me is our SOAS program manager, Andrew Dow. Hey, Scott, thanks for having me. Yeah. Hey, it's a pleasure to be out here, get some sunshine and uh, and uh, watch the physical evolution that's going on. Now, tell us a little bit um, about where we are in the SOAS evolution today. Okay. So we are, as you mentioned, at the obstacle course here at uh, NAB Coronado. Um, it is day three of SOAS assessment week. And right now we are doing an, uh, uh, one of the evolutions called IBS O course. Um, all the candidates are broken up into boat crews. And for this specific evolution, the objective is to navigate your IBS boat, the same boats they use in BUDS, through each obstacle that's on the O course. Granted, we're not doing some of the high ones because it's, it's not meaningful or doesn't have really a purpose to try to get a, an IBS boat over a 30 foot cargo net. So we're looking, we have them broken up right now into three groups and um, they're starting to navigate. So they start at, they got the parallel bars and the objective of each one of these is we're, we're looking at how they critic, their critical thinking, how the boat crew leader is he stepping, is he or she stepping up? Are they working as a team? Are they communicating? And how they're navigating through each uh, obstacle. You know, the, they have assessors watching their every move, seeing if they're talking about it, see who's not talking, see who's trying to be a leader, and you know, seeing the ones who are kind of hiding behind their fellow candidates. You know, the obstacle course is hard enough uh, on any given day, and now they've got a boat to get through these obstacles, so I'm assuming this is not a timed evolution. Well, actually, it is a timed evolution. Oh, there's, wow. a, there's an end time, but we they don't know how long they have. There is a set time, like when we'll stop it because we can't do this all day. But their job, their objective is to get through the obstacle as fast as possible, but here's the kicker. The boat cannot touch the ground. So as soon as they, right, there's three stations because it's a big obstacle course, so we have three groups going simultaneously. As soon as they pick the boat up to put it over on their heads, it cannot touch the ground. They could low carry it, they can, um, you know, shoulder carry it. They can full arm extend it, but it cannot touch the ground once they begin their section of the O course. Now I'm watching a bow crew that's trying to low crawl under the wire that we have set up, and they are attempting to put the boat on top as they try to crawl through. Is this a is this a winning strategy? So th they're allowed to ask questions to their assessor who's watching them and making sure they're being safe. They're allowed to ask questions. However, the assessor has the right to not answer it or to tell them to figure it out. The, the one obstacle you're talking about, the low crawl, which with the barbed wire, which isn't barbed wire, by the way, um, <laughs> that technique I would probably not suggest doing. Um, you know, I, I mean, they're trying to backwards low crawl with the boat holding it up. I mean, that's one way to do it, but that's probably not the most efficient way to do it. Um, without, you know, giving all the answers here, there's probably a faster way to mm -hmm. do it. Maybe send guys through, because each individual has to complete the obstacle before the boat crew can move on. So they have to get the boat across, then each one has to complete the obstacle. The low crawl one, the way they're doing it is one way you can do it may not be the best, but it's definitely not the worst. So it's as a book crew, it's, it's your objective to figure it out as a team, communicate, try out each ideas and find the way that works best. But back to what I was saying was each individual has to complete the obstacle as well. And if they fail to complete the obstacle three times, they earn a punishment. And that punishment is for right now, it's 20 push-ups. If the boat hits the ground, the entire boat crew needs to earns a punishment and that's most likely going to be hitting the surf because it's very warm out today and one of the big concerns is heat 
So we're keep constantly keeping them hydrated. We're constantly hit, making them hit the surf, not as punishment, more like as keep keep cool. I noticed a lot of these guys had the uh, the uh, sunblock uh, slathered all over their faces because it is a pretty clear day out here and very pleasant by ordinary standards. But uh, what they're going through now is is not what we would ordinarily call pleasant. Um, certainly the obstacle course is a physical test, but today it looks like it's very much a mental test. Oh, totally. So, uh, we have, th th like this one isn't a physically demanding. I mean, there is physical exertion happening while they're going over. As you can see, they're, they're doing one technique over the weaver. Um, that's, you gotta be in sync as a team getting through that obstacle. And you can probably hear it in the background. One of the persons taking charge and getting cadence so that they get through smoothly, quickly, and safely. And that was perfect form. Um, but honestly, the biggest exertion they'll hear have today is the sun beating down on them. So we definitely yeah. enforce them to keep the sunblock on them full time because we don't want some guy losing his opportunity to become potentially become a SEAL officer because he got a heat casualty and got really bad sunburn and wasn't able to perform. So Now just taking a step back and looking at this overall process, um, this particular SOAS evolution, uh, we've already seen a significant number of uh, trites and um, we're only in day two of the, the physical week. This is day two of physical exert, uh, evolutions, and um, honestly, the, the morning session these, in, uh, these candidates went through was pretty tough. Um, they had to do a, a lot of running with weight and a long endurance uh, course this morning. So these guys are feeling it, and we're only at you know midday of day two. So these guys are burn it you're, the, one of the things that is really we're looking at is the grit how tough these individuals are and they're constantly going 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 and constantly refueling by eating and drinking but we want to see them move past their comfort zone right because that's something we're assessing we want to see them reach a point where they thought they could never reach before and still be able to perform and communicate because these are our future officers of the teams men and women so we want to make sure that we're selecting the right ones to go to buds and they're going to be really tired at the end of the day today tomorrow is going to be a very demanding day but it ends early because come thursday thursday early early morning they're going to start their continuous 36 hour or more evolution until the finish line you know i i think a lot of people think that uh buds is is the hardest thing that the seals are ever going to do and then after that it's you know you just go on deployment and you shoot bad guys i've heard a lot of seals come back and say buds was really hard deployment was even harder and if i hadn't learned those lessons in buds about how to just push through the pain and the fatigue i wouldn't have made it through deployment <laughs> That's a great point. Um, just from my experience, looking back, BUDS was challenging. It had its challenges, but I think it was more mental than physical challenges because you wanted to perform at your best. You wanted to make sure you're um, always doing what you're supposed to be doing and still trying to you know, be the fastest runner, fastest swimmer, and still lead your men and women. Um, you did learn a lot. The things you learned at BUDS helped you do better in deployment, but there's things in deployments that you couldn't prepare for. And these are things that, because you were mentally challenged in BUDS, your brain was, you know, your mental capacity was just so much stronger come deployment. So when you were faced with challenges, you were able to overcome them. But however, deployment's still challenging because you got all these other things you know some guys and gals have spouses at home they have kids at home they don't know what's going on and it's hard for them to not think about these things when they're on deployment but it's it's they need to try to block that out when they're doing life or death situation things um, and you know they're learning a lot of these little things while they're here at SOAS and then when they eventually move on to BUDS so BUDS is challenging but it's preparing you for what's coming next. Now look at this evolution here where they're they're getting ready to attempt the balance logs and 
We should point out that this isn't just like the balance beam you'd see in a high school gymnasium where, it, where it's stationary. These are actually logs that are, that are set down low. You know, they're no more than probably a foot or so off the ground. But they are sort of uh, free standing, if you will. And, and in other words, when you walk on them, they rotate. <laughs> like they can move back and forth to side to side and and that's what throws the balance off it's not just about walking across a narrow space it's about the rotation of the log and you know we can see some of the candidates having a difficulty with that now they're going to try to <laughs> move a boat yeah. across these balance logs and that is that is really hard so this is this is really a critical thinking exercise absolutely so the logs Logs without a boat is challenging. I mean, going through uh, buds many years ago, the balance logs was always the, one of the number one things that got bud students, this and the rope swing. It was just, you're trying to do the obstacle course as fast as possible, right? Because you're always trying to beat your old time. If not, you pay, you pay a price, right? You're trying to always do better. And now, like the balance logs, they do, they, there is no, real friction those things the slightest left shift of weight or right shift of weight those things are spinning so i mean there's a million ways to do it but it's just okay find that balance get through it now we're adding a boat something candidates should look at is yeah okay each we require them to each complete the op obstacle and then get the boat through um sometimes what i what I would recommend is probably getting the boat through first and then want, start sending guys through. Just because, one, it's probably easier with a boat because it's more w weight dispersed. Um, but this one section, this is still section one that we're looking at over here, is probably the hardest and most likely these guys will not finish because it's just... Okay, here we see another boat crew and they're going through the vaults, which is a series of five logs uh, set about roughly waist high that you have to just vault over and go to the next one and uh, Each one of these guys is going over the vaults, which is relatively easy But they're also trying to muscle that boat over the the obstacle as well and it looks like they're succeeding so that one th that one's relatively easy because you can just rest the boat on top of the logs but let me just let the viewers know that these boats are 200 pounds and of course there's going to be sand in it so you'll get an excess of 10 20 pounds inside there and then when they get to the water it's even worse but um the it is it is crucial to do well in this entire evolution of SOAS, it's teamwork. I mean, we're looking at communication, uh, critical thinking, but teamwork is the biggest hurdle that sometimes guys, you know, you get guys and gals who don't agree on certain things and it shows. As you can see, we just finished. So each boat crew, wow, every boat crew got through that one. That's impressive. Usually we have some boat crews that can't get through the balance logs or specifically on the section three with the, uh, the, the tower line, the, the rope slide for life. Um, of course, they're not doing the high rope, they're doing the low rope. But hey, now fill me up. we got candidates running around. Um, right now they just finished with their time, but they're getting hydrating because like I said, hydration is so important here for them to perform well. So Andrew, after today they're going to go on and they're going to do more evolutions and how many hours per day would you say that they're they're active so monday and so candidates arrive on saturday you know check in and then on sunday they do a pst that's the first thing they do then they'll do some classwork and then monday's when it starts they usually start about 5 a.m and they'll go till about eight nine o'clock at night um you know, they'll get three meals a day, hour breaks, uh, plenty of time to stretch and drink, but they're doing this Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday's a shorter day, so they'll finish around 6 p.m. And then it's a mystery. I can't really tell the viewers what's gonna happen Thursday, Friday, but let's just say it's nonstop for a little bit of time. Yeah, I can only imagine that the uh, challenges are, are getting harder and harder each day. Absolutely. So, the, I mean, this is the second block this summer. We're seeing, you know, we, we've lost quite a few candidates already, just them realizing that, hey, this is not what I 
want to do anymore or they weren't physically prepared. Yeah. Um, and it's it's a, it's it's a really challenging, specifically for the OCS and ROTC guys who don't really have experience. You know, maybe making a visit here or having the the, um, uh, the facilities at their location to kind of like you know be a little kid again because this is like a, a a big kids playground. That's how we look at it. Um, and just unfortunately, on ROTC and OCS don't have that. Naval Academy has some things like this with the confidence course and the Marine Corps obstacle course. So they have opportunities to work their upper body, lower body in conjunction, working as a team. Um, but we've seen a lot of candidates, you know, just realizing that hey, this this isn't for me, or I wasn't prepared, and they'll try to prepare and come back next year. I know we've talked about this in previous episodes, but. Just looking at it out, out here today as these guys, you know, are uh, navigating these obstacles, the, the strength that's required, the coordination that's required, and the endurance, what would you say is probably the best thing they could do physically to get ready for a day like this? So without getting too into the weeds, the biggest thing candidates can do before coming to SOAS in general, make sure you're in running shape and make sure you've ran in boots on some sort of soft ground. It doesn't have to be sand, but it needs. It can't just be running on concrete or hard surfaces all the time. Everything you do at SOAS, everything you do at BUDS is on some sort of uneven, soft ground. Mm. So just conditioning your lower body to be used to that type of uh, environment to perform in is very important before showing up. I mean, you have the other things. You should be strong. Uh, you know, on the SEAL SWIC website, they have the SEAL, uh, the PST calculator. Um, they're able to. You should be always going back there if you can't do the math yourself. It's set up perfectly to input your scores. They should always be reviewing on their PST scores to see how they're performing because PST isn't everything, but it gives you a good indicator of where you're at physically. Um, you know upper body's huge at psoas and buds but so is lower body i mean you're going to be everywhere you go you're running everywhere um, every evolution you're going to be doing you're going to be lifting something either over your head or on your back so you're constantly working so full body workouts not heavy weight more like lightweight high reps and just constantly it's it's you're conditioning for a marathon vice conditioning for a sprint I know when I've talked to the guys at PrEP that uh, they, they stress the importance of neck strength and ankle strength and stability because these are things that guys don't often think about, but with that boat on your head, that 200 pound boat, your neck is going to be tested and running on that uneven ground, but running on those uneven surfaces, um, you know, ankles can get turned and this kind of thing and, and the swimming with fins really helps a lot with that. Um, but I think the candidates who are best prepared seem to have worked on those things, not just the big muscles and the endurance, but also those those stabilizing parts of their body. Absolutely. So here's a lot of injuries in first phase where we see is shin splints or um, knee pains. It's just like you said, it's those small m muscle and bones that aren't conditioned, aren't used to the soft surfaces that you sh I highly recommend you condition before you get here because you'll be at such an advantage because if you're healthy going through buds, going through psoas, I mean, you got a leg up on anyone else. Um, strong ankle support, right? Because like we said, you're running everywhere. You're jumping, climbing. We're watching guys uh, conduct the, the obstacle called the dirty name, which is two uneven logs. And if you don't have that core strength, you're not going to be able to jump across, get your body over it, and then swing over and land. Um, it's if you're not if you're not careful and not um, mentally there. I mean, this can be very dangerous. But we have staff everywhere watching this. We have constant eyes on each individual candidate, and I mean these these instructors have been doing it for years. So the, buds have been going on for years so we know all everything that can happen and what will happen and how to action if something happens so yeah and of course the corpsman is always out here too right whenever we do these evolutions so if somebody does uh, get injured then he's Johnny on the spot to take a look at it and assess it and see what it needs um, buds medical handles a lot of uh, of these, uh, you know, injuries like the shin splints and the occasional, uh, you know, stingray uh, 
<laughs> um, Surprisingly, that's been a, a culprit for injuries. Yeah. You know, just students hit the surf and those stingray stingers go right through boots. And wow. there's just a huge population right here on the Pacific, on the Silver Strand, right outside our base. So it's, it's very weird that when you see a guy come to medical and it happens so often that I got stung by a stingray. You kind of laugh, but it's pretty painful. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I see one group we've got um, that's attempting to navigate the dirty name, and, and they've just about got the boat all the way over. The dirty name, the, the first log is about six feet high, I'd say, and the second one is about mm -hmm. ten feet high, and it's about, what, maybe eight or nine feet away. Mm -hmm. So you got to jump up on the first log, then jump over to the higher log, get over it, and then drop down. And they've, they've managed to get the boat over. Yeah, they did. They they navigate it the right way. That, that one group right there, they're communicating. Um, there's not just one person barking orders or commands. It looks like they're working good as a team. And now our our second group over here is is working on the low wall, and we say low wall, but that wall is what twelve feet. Twelve feet, yeah. yeah. So you got to jump up, grab it, pull yourself up, and then go over. And now it looks like two of them are stationing themselves up there on top to take the front painter line of the boat and hold on to it while the others hold up the other end and they're gonna have to get over and then they're gonna have to work it down on the other side in the opposite fashion. Yep, and like, yeah, those boats are heavy so I hope they don't leave one guy on the other side because 200 pounds coming from high elevation. Uh, some we'll weigh even more. To <laughs> exactly. <laughs> But yeah, they're doing, that's a good technique that they're doing right now. You know, um, having guys uh, on both sides of the wall working together, they're communicating, moving through, while the guy on top is help navigating the boat over. Now here's a fascinating thing. We've got a third group that is working on, what is the name of this obstacle again? Uh, the Slide for Life. Yeah, that's right. Slide for Life, which is basically, the, the, there's two levels of ropes parallel ropes. One comes from 30 feet up and the other one's at about six feet up. Candidates are not doing the high one because it's just one, you can't get a boat up there. And two, the lower one's actually harder because there's no gravity pulling you down. So it's all upper body and leg work to get across the rope. So they have to navigate the boat across the lines to the end. And of course, if you can see what we're seeing is that the, they're slack in the line. So once they get past the halfway point, it's all uphill. Yeah. So they're trying to get a boat up the hill, and they're struggling a little bit, but the hard part coming right now is getting it over the last uh, cross beam. You know, yeah. they got it all the way across the ropes. They're trying, they're talking through it right now, but this is going to be interesting to see how they get it over. There's a, there's a couple ways to do it. I mean, that's one way to do it, but it's... Yeah, it looks like they're going to turn it and try to take the, take the front across without it falling between the two ropes and hitting the ground. So again, it's problem solving. Yep, critical thinking, yep. So they're, they're being assessed on a scale of one to five. Each individual is being uh, assessed on their critical thinking skills, communication, and uh, teamwork. Well, Andrew, after we finish up this week, what's next for them? So this is SOAS Block 2. They'll finish this week on Friday, and then they'll move into exposure interview week where they'll conduct their community interviews with a SEAL officer and a senior SEAL enlisted. Um, and then from there, it's the following Friday, they head home and um, wait. Wait to find out if wait, they've been exactly. chosen. If they're selected to go to BUDS and you know potentially become SEAL officers, and that will happen in September. Well, that's amazing. It's, it's been great to be out here today and just take a look and see what's going on during the, the physical week of SOAS. And uh, we wish these uh, candidates luck and, um, and hope that uh, they're able to uh, make it to the grinder one day and, and then uh, try even harder things to, mm -hmm. to get that pin. Andrew, thanks for joining me today. Oh, and, thanks, Scott. Um, I appreciate it. This is the, uh, the third segment of four for our SOAS series. Uh, we hope you have enjoyed today's episode and we uh, look forward to the next one when we can talk about what happens um, after this week and we get to selections. I'm Scott Williams. This was the only easy day was yesterday. 
Andrew, thank you very much. Thanks again. There's nowhere to hide in Hell Week, Jets. If you've been skating through bugs so far, you will not do so anymore.